to do a little dance off? Sure. Okay, you do a move and then I do a move. Move first. Oh, you have to pass it off. No, no, that was me passing it so off. So when, when you pass it off to me, I have to do the same move oh, and then okay. add on. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> please do. Bobby! Bobby! <laughs> Guys, please tell Arya to stop telling me that I look like my dad. My dad is a very handsome, beautiful man, but he that man is bald. I do not look like my dad these days. And she always, like, <laughs> he, go, he comes in the house and be like, Angela. <laughs> Angela. Do, do, can you do an impression when he dances? Oh, oppa! <laughs> no, my dad. My dad's biggest issue in life is that I'm not married yet. Every single time we talk, he doesn't ask about my life. He doesn't know anything about. He doesn't want to know anything except where's my husband and why am I not Do married? Do of him, please. Hey, Angela, you have boyfriend or you already break up in a new one? <laughs> <laughs> Like, Dad, that's what dating is. Like, <laughs> what do you say? And what happens when you bring someone home? What does he say? I mean, I barely ever. Every time I bring someone home, he's just really. He's like, okay, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, in one day you love him, next week he was not the one. He's ruining my life. <laughs> he says that. That's what I say every single time. Dad, oh, that is so funny. Oh, our what's up, Ian? What's up, what's up dog? dog? What's up, dog? What's up? You know, we are. Well, I really like this look on you a lot. Which one? <laughs> Which one? <I> don't know. <laughs> <laughs> headband. The headband. Can we both wear headbands on stage? Yeah, I just can't bring all the hair back because then I really look like Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> I, look at look at look at look at there's something about I know, I wanna looks. Do. Get down. <laughs> you you know you let me talk the whole time like this. When? I'll forgive you, but it's still there. Oh whoa, it's even bigger now. <laughs> Please, I'm so embarrassed. You look insane. Um so yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's going on, dude? <laughs> what's going what's on? up, guy? That's how everyone <laughs> back home talks and that's how we talk when we when we talk to each other now. I, I do love, it. Uh, what's up, dude? What's up, guy? What's how up? you doing? I love when you're talking that What, a, what so. an imbecile that guy is, huh? Tell me how your aunt asked for scratch-offs at the gas station. I'm going to 7-Eleven. I got to get a scratchy. I got to get a scratchy. And then my mother will text us. You lock your doors? You, you lock your doors? What did she say? What did she say? Um, She says... She says she, um, she always goes. Did you guys? You guys are all over the country. Did you pack your underwear? And I'm like, oh. you, did you pack underwear? You lock your doors. I bet so many Boston moms that are listening right now say the same thing. Oh man, be I, acting like little children when we go back I know. home. Make me eggs. There's nothing worse than me and you going back to Florida to my oh, mom. We the, we become like little. It's cats. it's actually like, it's scary the way we act. It's not okay. We're like two little girls. She's like bringing us fruit, eggs. We're sitting. There. We drive her nuts. We drive her nuts. Poor we drive Christina. your mom nuts. We drive her nuts. Our moms are so involved in our lives. <laughs> <laughs> we act like we're not grown women. Like it's Ooh, I'm. I'm really a grown woman. So <laughs> no, what's me right, too. I really don't have an excuse. It's really bad. <laughs> Oh, Anyways, man. what are we talking about today? We didn't do an intro. Oh, hi, I'm Ange. <laughs> and I'm Mari. And this is Girls Gone Bible. We are a faith-based podcast where we talk all things spirituality, mental health, the Bible, anything to do with Jesus. That is not the intro. We talk about Jesus. We love Jesus. That's it. Thank you for coming. It's been a year and a half and we still don't know how to do this. But what do you say? Come as you are, just don't stay that way. You know what, Ar? Why, Mom? Here's the thing. Me and you, buddy, we've been through a long purification process. Yes, we have. <laughs> <laughs> and every single day, just like gold and silver, God exposes something new. I've done a lot of research, so a view on purification, gold and silver, how it's pressed and you put it to the fire, and usually, like with gold, how gold gets purified is that it gets pressed and crushed so hard that all the impurities come to the surface, mm. and that's what happens with us. 
every so often you realize like, oh, I didn't know that this impurity was there. (laughs) You think you're all good. Whoa, the rage. Oh, (laughs) I got to get that. Hey, what was that? I thought I was in the spirit of God. You go the whole long time thinking you're perfect and then God just makes you realize you're not. What's that about? Thank you for bringing that up because, (laughs) man, we be thinking we're walking in the spirit and then then something ticks us off and then then we're in the back in the devil's pen. (laughs) Ah, oh, man. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. Yeah, today Ari and I want to talk about purification. We want to talk about... So I just want to start this off by saying I'm sick again. I can't believe it. I A can't friend got it. me... I mean, it is the season. No. Like... <laughs> You have a great way of doing that. (laughs) When I woke up with a sore throat this morning, I was like, you have got to be kidding me. It is God's grace on your life that I have. I'd be wearing that gold plate. I'm a baby. baby. (laughs) The sword of the spirit. I got the sword of the spirit, baby. (laughs) It is God's grace on your life that I had COVID for like two months and you didn't get it. We literally share everything, sleep in the same bed and you didn't get it because he knew. (laughs) It is God's grace because he knows. He knows. Sweet baby Ari. Will be a nightmare. And I will drag you through the mud with me. I will not be acting have like I ever, you. Okay, hang on. Have I ever seen you sick? Well, I'm a hypochondriac. I think there's a tumor growing out of my head every two I days. Re- I, don't I thought I had a- Graves' disease in my eyes, remember? She, like, didn't sleep good one night, so her eyes were pink, so she thought she had Graves' disease. <laughs> she was looking in the mirror. <gasps> Ange, look. Ange, look. Comparing photos. I was losing my mind. I thought I Ange, had- I think, I think, I think, um, I, I think saw- there's a tumor growing out of my I- neck. <laughs> I saw an infomercial on Graves' disease, and I was convinced I am the biggest hypochondriac. Every other day, you think you have pink eye. Every other day. <laughs> <laughs> probably shouldn't be sharing. <laughs> hey, come as you are. Just don't say that way. <laughs> so really quick, before we get into it today, we are on tour right now, as you guys know. Please get your tickets. We're going to be in Fort Lauderdale this weekend. We're going to be in Tampa. We're going to be in Anaheim, Salt Lake City, Denver, Colorado, Detroit, Michigan, Minneapolis, Indiana, Nana. Teach in I'll Colorado. teach you. I'll, oh, at, Will you? we're staying a couple of days. Yeah. Minneapolis, Indiana. I don't know where these places. Listen, we don't know where these places are. We don't know where we are. We just show up. Please show up too. And let's hang out and talk about Jesus and love on each other together. Go to girlsgonebible.com slash tour and come see us. Yes, we have GGV Plus, you guys. It's so fun because we get to go deeper and we get to talk about things we don't get to share on here. And it's like being with your sisters. We're going to do a lot of cool things on there. So go to GGV Plus and subscribe. Yeah. Purification. God purifies us, mind, body, and spirit. He purifies us to remove the things in our lives, in our minds, in our bodies, in our hearts that destroy our lives. That's his whole thing is to make us more like him. We are made in the image of God and we are forever in a sanctification and purification process where we are made more like Jesus. Everything about us is made, meant to be like Jesus. Basically, I thought before Ari and I get into our own purification um, journeys, I just wanted to read a couple of things. I've been in the Old Testament for a while now, and it's basically like all of Leviticus and Numbers. There's so many rituals. There's so many in the Old Testament. Purification strictly was by rituals and symbolic and physical washing away and cleansing and purification by blood sacrifice. You would take a lamb or a sheep or whatever sort of animal to come and take the place for us. A high priest would come, bring an animal sacrifice on the day of atonement, one day of the year, every single year. And so Leviticus 1630 says, for on this day shall atonement be made for you to cleanse you. You shall be clean before the Lord from all your sins. So the high priest would offer sacrifices for the people's sins, but the purification was temporary. It was not sufficient. You had to repeat it every single year. And then Leviticus 17.11 says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it for you on the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement by the life. 
The blood of animals was used for atonement, symbolizing the life given to cover sins. However, this was incomplete because it did not change the heart or provide permanent transformation. And then throughout Numbers and Leviticus, there's ceremonial washings where people would be washed and purified by water and you would bring different types of sacrifices and altars. But again, it was like ritual purification that only took care of cleansing the outside of the body. It didn't bring any spiritual transformation. Forgiveness of sins can only come by the blood of Jesus. What do you mean by different waters? Not different water, so different ceremonial washing. So there was, oh. so there were like so many things. If you read Leviticus, like if you read the Old Testament, there's so many things in it that literally it's like so it's it's crazy. It took me a while. I literally was wondering why I the whole time I was reading like Leviticus, I was like, why am I reading this? I don't understand. But I have such a deeper understanding now of honestly how ridiculous it used to be. And how much we, like, it just shows you how much we needed Jesus. You had to be cleansed if, like, every every month, for example, a woman would have her, like, menstrual period. Mm -hmm. And it was, I, I need to get the exact number, but for, like, seven day, days after that, she was ceremonially unclean. Mm -hmm. No one could touch her. If you touched her, you were also considered ceremonially unclean. And you all had to, like, go through these rituals of purification and cleansing. And that's just one example of, like, hundred like so many different types of being uncleanly wow. it's just insane like it was so insane what you had to do and again it was like outward purification no inner transformation and it was insufficient and you couldn't even get a hug imagine how moody we are on our menstrual cycle you couldn't even get a hug i'd be like you better get over here and give me a hug um, i'm not feeling good <laughs> i wonder if anyone said that I'm sure they did. I'm sure. I don't know. It's like, so, can you even imagine living no. in those times, truly? And then the beautiful, beautiful thing that happened, what our whole faith is based on, is Jesus' sacrifice as final atonement. And Hebrews 9, 12 to 14 says, He entered once and for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer, 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 <laughs> Sanctify for the purification of the flesh. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Jesus' death presented as a superior sacrifice that offers eternal redemption. And it's unlike the animal sacrifices. Jesus did it once and for all. We never, ever, ever, ever have to bring a sacrifice or an altar. The only sacrifice that Jesus wants is a life laid down for him. He paid the price. F we're free of debt. We have no debt um, because of what Jesus did. And then Hebrews 10.10 10 just says, And by that we will have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. So Jesus' sacrifice is a one-time event that purifies believers completely. Thank you, Jesus. If you feel like you have nothing else to thank Lord, the Lord for, just the, what he did 2,000 years ago on the cross is more than enough. We could have never, 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 never lived up to the standard of the Old Testament. It's the greatest gift. Every time you guys start to, um, you know, feel bad, you just say, well, I don't have to go find a bull uh, yeah. and kill it to, to, get, to get to Jesus. Thank Can you. Can you imagine us going to hunt down bulls? Can you imagine? How did the women kill the... Oh, no. Cause. The men, well, I don't think the women did it. So it's basically we always had a high priest. We yeah, had high someone priest. between us and Jesus who would do it for us. Um, what a gift. That's honestly what a gift what that a we gift. have. It's the Holy Spirit mm. that's inside us. Guys, the world keeps getting smarter. Your e-commerce business should too. Whether you're looking for incredible efficiency or your business has outgrown your old shipping solutions, ShipStation helps you take the next step. 
ShipStation helps you achieve exceptional shipping efficiency with a robust all-in-one order fulfillment system that integrates with over 180 of the most popular e-commerce platforms, marketplaces, and carriers. I have personally loved using ShipStation so much. It is so easy to automate shipping tasks and manage orders in just one simple dashboard. I love that automations allow me to smoothly print out shipping labels at the click of a button. Do you know how good it feels to save thousands on shipping with an industry-leading carrier discounts? It is the fastest, most affordable way to ship products to your customers with discounts up to 89% off UPS, DHL, Express, and USPS rates. You can effortlessly scale your business with smart features and automations that boost efficiencies while bringing costs down. Over 130 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation, and 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. Lead your e-commerce business into a smarter future with the ShipStation software that delivers, guys. Switch to ShipStation today. Get a 60-day free trial at ShipStation.com slash GGB. Thank you, ShipStation, for sponsoring the show. How do you feel like with your purification process? Like explain it a little bit personally. Yeah. So the Bible describes God as a refiner. And it. I wrote something down. It's God's refining process is one that purifies and tests believers, similar to how gold and silver are refined by fire to remove impurities. Through trials, God aims to purify hearts and strengthen faith. The idea of refining suggests that hardship is purposeful, leading to spiritual growth and deeper trust in God. Yeah. So... Being refined like fire. Like, you know that song? You're finer than the fire. I don't. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Let me never sing again. Rihanna? No, Chief (laughs) Keef. Throughout this whole journey of following Jesus, there's been an intense purification. I mean, we have already done an episode on outward purity. We've talked about... There's a pure heart and clean hands. We've talked about refraining from, and it is so much more than just sexual sin, but like sexual sin is a massive part of it. And Mm -hmm. that's something that we took care of. God took care of in us a long time ago and that we continue to commit ourselves to. We, Ari and I truly value purity above everything else. Everything that we do comes from either the purity or the impurity of our hearts. We have to speak on here every single week. Even if we weren't in ministry, purity would be the... But when you're in a position of leadership, you're just a different ball game. And so we know that whatever's in here is what's going to come out. So the state of our hearts, the purity of our hearts means everything to us. And we're very... We have the fear of God in us, the fear of God that (laughs) any word that comes out of our mouths or any sort of behavior, anything, anything, the conviction is just like, I don't like that. Yeah. Any impurity that we see in ourselves, we're just like, that's not, we don't, Mm -hmm. we don't like it. But in terms of purification, so there's been so much externally that we've had to remove from our lives. There's so many things that have changed. Our behavior has changed. I know for me, I am a completely different person. Yeah. I am a completely different person. In such a short amount of time, too. In such a short amount Mm -hmm. of time. And it's, like, jarring. Yeah. Because... You really, I mean, God has done a major, major work where there's so many areas in my heart and my life that he just like, he pokes and he puts his hand Mm -hmm. on and he's like, okay, here, okay, here, okay, here. And it's just a continuous like, okay, yes, okay, yes. All right, let's change it. Okay, bring it out of me. And for me, what I've really noticed is a lot of my purification has come through trials. Yeah. It's like. Every time a bad situation hits, hardship exposes what's already in your heart. And so every time that happens to me, I realize, 
oh, okay, that was in there and I didn't know that it was in there. And that's something that needs to change. And that's something that I need, gr- like an area I need growth in. Yeah. And so there's just been so many, th- I mean, there's so many types of impurity. There's pride, greed, selfishness, um, a million different types of things. So it's just a constant, like every situation that I'm in brings up something new. Mm -hmm. And it's like a little bit more gunk that God God is like, I'm sorry that you have to face this right now. And it's so uncomfortable. And like being held to the fire is painful and it burns, but I'm burning this impurity Mm -hmm. out of you. Wow. You know, what, like, can you give me an example? For example, I think provocativeness, for example, I went my whole life like not thinking. I didn't know that being provocative in any way was contributing to evil. Right. You know? Yeah, same. I didn't know that that was bad. Like I didn't grow up in a context where that was bad. I grew up in a Christianity, a Catholicism, like whatever it was where like you loved Jesus and like you could still be sexy and like all these things. Like I really truly didn't know that that was evil. Mm Mm-hmm. I thought evil was like being a bad person. Yeah. You know? Same. And so, and even like immodesty and just like presenting yourself a certain way. And so that has been like a major, that has been put to the fire since we started this journey with Jesus where like every single day, it's like more, more, more. Yes, you've made progress, but there's still a ways to go. And so that's like a major area of my life where, and I've had to like, I've had to grieve it too. Yeah. You know what I mean? There have been moments like now, I mean, it's gone. I mean, if you see, I, she's like, I want to wear that. <laughs> I No, I'm now I'm like, I don't want to wear any of it. Please. I'm good. But like, it, there was a while where I was like, but why? But you know what yeah. I mean? You, it's hard to let go of these things, but, and it's painful. It's painful. What was really painful for me was being confronted with the fact that I had like lived a certain way my whole life having no idea that I was dishonoring God the whole time. And then also being so ignorant to like, obviously, like the way you're acting, like you're preaching Jesus, but then acting a completely different way. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's been a major area of like serious purification yeah. for me. I think the both of us, Yeah, like we did fight for a little bit. This episode is brought to you by NoCD. When you're struggling with your mental health, knowing that you're not alone can mean everything. And that's why Ari and I are so open about our own experiences with depression, anxiety, and OCD, and why we want to shed some light on a part of mental health that can be so hard to talk about, which is religious OCD, also known as scrupulosity OCD. People usually have a pretty good idea of what depression is or what anxiety is, but OCD is still really misunderstood. It isn't just about hand washing and organization. It can focus on anything you care about. And when OCD attacks your relationship with God, it can be devastating. Religious OCD often involves unwanted, stressful, and even blasphemous thoughts that go against your beliefs. Thoughts like, did I pray correctly? I need to do it again until it's perfect. Or did I do something to offend God? Or I had a hard time focusing in church, so I feel like I've sinned. These thoughts can lead to intense guilt, shame, and compulsive behavior. But what you need to understand about religious OCD is that it is not a sign that you're a bad Christian. It's a serious but treatable condition. And with the right care, you can take its power away. And that's where NoCD comes in. With NoCD, you can do live face-to-face video therapy sessions with a licensed therapist who deeply understands OCD as well as your faith and how important it is in your life. They'll help you work through these thoughts using exposure and response prevention therapy, or ERP, the gold standard treatment for OCD. NoCD also accepts many major insurance plans and offers always-on support between sessions. If you think you might be struggling with religious OCD and want to learn more about therapy with NoCD, go to nocd.com and schedule a free 15-minute call with their team. That's nocd.com to learn more and book a free 15 minute call. I think repentance has been the biggest um, blessing in my faith. Yeah. Um, I love a good repentance session. I never knew about repentance. I never knew about it. I, I, you know, I wanted to read a scripture from Psalm 51. I won't read the whole thing because it's long, but 
I'll just read down to purify me from my sins and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Mm. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Mm. And then it goes down to saying, you do not desire a sacrifice or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. Mm. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, oh God. I love that so much and I relate to that so much because I remember when I was going through my broken heart, that's when I was the most vulnerable. Yeah. That's when I was the most humble. That's when I was the most open. I had no, uh, I had no pride. I had no, I I, I, ha- I didn't have a, a hardened heart or a hard head. Yeah. And so I was able to just bleed out and be so vulnerable and open and say, help me. I need you. I have nothing. I'm empty. Yeah. Fulfill me. Let me learn. Teach me. Teach me your ways. Um, forgive me for anything I've done. You're in this place when you're so broken that you're like, I have nothing left in me. Can you help me? Can you show me? Because I don't know any better. You just want help. You're like, you revert back to a little kid when you're in the place of such brokenness. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's really hard when you grow up in a home where you have watched certain things your whole life. Yeah. Did you come from a loving family or did you come from a family that fought their way and and manipulated each other? Did you grow up in a little bit of narcissism? That just unfortunately does dictate the way you grow up and the way you act as an adult. Um, So in my life and in my flesh as an adult, I you know, would say things off the cuff and I would have some ego and pride Mm -hmm. and I didn't know how to uh, handle um, certain situations. And that's been a journey for me and still is. And it's still God refining me and and teaching me. Um, And so um, I think repentance has been just such a gift for me because I can't get away with anything anymore (laughs) and running to God and bringing it to his feet, asking him for help and asking him to forgive me has been the greatest blessing. Yeah. A story that I think about um, with refining is when I started my my faith, um, I was learning and and things were coming up that I didn't even know. Um, I had had something go on with my sister. My I talk about my sister a lot on here, but my little sister, I'm like her mom where just she's everything to me. Um, and so when we were both going through things in our own lives, we just kept having problems and we were just butting heads, totally. which ended up creating so much problems between us two. And mm-hmm. we got into a massive fight. Like mm-hmm. it was so bad. Um, and my, my pride told me, well, I'm going to teach her a lesson and I'm not going to reach out to her and I'm going to show her and this is it. And she can just learn. And, and this went on and I'm typically someone who, when I'm, no matter what it is, I'm like, I'm sorry, let's talk it out. I had so much pride that I was just like, no, like I, I'm, I'm done. Like I'm, and this is like somebody that I love. This is my sister. This is my family. And I, I was like, in my mind, I was never speaking to her again. Totally. And this went on for so long. <clears throat> and I just remember as I started my faith, something was not right. I, I like could, wow. I almost couldn't, I was, I was seeing God, but I was, there was still this like block between God and I. And I kept, you know, as I kept reading my Bible and as I kept learning about God and pride and, and ego and how you have to just forgive our Forgi- wow. forgiveness. Yeah. Um, Major impurity. It's such wow. an impurity. And so I kept hearing your sister. Wow. What's going on with your sister? And I remember talking to you about this and being like, I really miss my sister. And so... What would I say? You have to call her. That's your sister. And I just remember sitting with God and just talking about it. And so 
I finally was like, what am I doing? What, how has so much time gone by? How have I had this, this heart and heart and this unforgiveness and this bitterness that it feels like I'm carrying this large backpack yeah. on my back? Wow. And so I'll never forget when I, I, I finally I sent her a long message and I just said, I love you so much. I can't believe so much time has gone by. Forgive me for mm. everything. Forgive me. I love you. And we ended up talking on the phone for hours. And then I <laughs> went back to Boston to see her and we just cried together. And we were like, and she had told me she is she, she was so sorry and she was going through so much in her whole in her own life and it was this beautiful um unity of her and I and we learned so much and we set boundary, boundaries with each yeah. other and we talked it out and we just were like this is cr- like never again like how crazy was it that we w- let so much time go by and so that's something that I am learning so much in my walk with Jesus that when you have pride, you cannot, like pride in God does not coincide. Like you cannot be in the presence totally. of God, but have the spirit of pride. Mm-hmm. And so learning to every time you feel that pride, like be like, okay, like to, to, to the, the repentance. That's why when you have when you have pride, that causes unrepentance because you are acting so tough with your heart and heart that you're like, I don't need, I don't need to ask for forgiveness. I don't need to go to this yeah, person. Totally. Pride is the worst thing mm-hmm. you can have. And so many of us subconsciously have it and we don't even realize it's all it. All out of protect trying to protect, protect yourself. yourself. And yeah. that's what I mean when you go back as a child, it's yeah. like you learn from your parents and you don't know and you're trying to protect yourself and you don't want to get hurt. And when it's not that we're being bad or we're evil or we're coming from a bad place. We're just all hurting inside. Totally. And so that's been my journey of, of purification totally. is getting that pride out, getting that ego out, um, not letting things fester. That's why I'm so raw in here and, and, and <laughs> vulnerable because it's 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 healed me and I, I believe that being so vulnerable like this, always guarding your heart, but being vulnerable and yeah. open and um apologizing is always it's it's so pleasing to Jesus. And um I know that anytime I have that spirit of pride or ego, it's it's a separation from God. Totally. And that's scary, you know. Pride is like what I mean. I'm so happy that you brought that up. And you know what that reminds me of? This is like my main way. This is like when I think of purification, this is what I think of. Every time that I sit down and I'm about to go in with Jesus on somebody and I'm about to be like, Jesus, this person, that Jesus, that, and then all of a sudden, how does it always end with me repenting, begging him for forgiveness? Yeah. You go in thinking there's so many and he's like, I'll handle them. Let's handle you right now. That's purification. That's refinement. God forcing you to come up against everything that's in your heart that we're too prideful to admit or want to see like when you're in true relationship with Jesus humility is a natural response to being close to Jesus you can't have pride when you're humble and so when you're naturally humble in God's presence it allows you to have all these things that's why the presence of God is the best therapy of all time nobody can tell me otherwise it's in those moments in the secret place where you're sitting and you let God come in and your walls are down and you're not just like praying a bunch of prayers going through routine rituals well, no, you're like literally letting God actually come in and expose what's in your heart. And for me, every time that I'm up against a situation where I know I'm being prideful and I know I'm self-protecting and all of these things, and then he begins to tear my walls down and showing me everything that is wrong with me yeah, because he loves me and wants yeah. to expose it, not because he wants to shame me, but that is so so real about the pride and it's just like it really is just all hurt like it's hurt Hurt. like the impurity is all of us just hurting and we come up we pick up things on the way through life that like vices and things to protect ourselves with that end up being sinful and impure in our hearts yeah you know i just I, i say this a lot on the on on here but The one thing that has truly freed both of us, I believe, is like 
there has just been so many times we have screwed up and we are just so imperfect and we have fallen and we have just, and he's given us so much grace, even with Girls Gone Bible, and he just still loves us. Like I have never felt so safe in my life than I do now because I I am so loved. Yeah. And it's just, it's been, it's just, it's the greatest thing ever. It's It really is. It's the greatest thing ever when you know how loved you are, when yeah. you know how forgiven you are, when you know that you have the gift of the Holy Spirit that helps you, that you can just say, you can talk to as talk a friend. To. Like, hey, you know, you, you can pick up the phone and call your friend. Yeah. We have that with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I never knew that before. And so now that I know that, it's just been such a gift. And so that's why it's like every time we have that pride, I just want you to remember how much he's forgiven us, how much he loves us. And then you just get that. You're like, oh, wait, then why why am I acting like this? Let me go forgive them. Let me go talk to them. Let me put like, let me speak love to them. Just like Socrates says, what does he say about love? Um, Love your enemies. Show them love. Just keep, there. there's no room for Bless it. them. Bless them. Bless keep them, love them. them. Guys, good Americans always fit jeans are a total game changer. Whether it's a big lunch, a few drinks with friends, or even that time of the month, these jeans fit like a dream. They stretch perfectly with my body. They give me the room to move and breathe without ever losing their shape. I feel so confident and comfortable no matter what the day brings. It's like they were just made for me. I've always struggled to find jeans that fit me perfectly. They're either too tight in some places or too loose in others, and I end up feeling so uncomfortable all day. But then I tried good American jeans, and everything changed, you guys. They're always fit jeans, have this incredible stretch that just moves with my body no matter what I'm doing. It's like they were designed to adapt to me, and I never have to worry about them losing their shape or feeling too tight. Co-founded by Khloe Kardashian and Emma Greed with a mission to redefine fashion through inclusivity and comfort, creating denim that feels as good as it looks, catering to all body shapes and sizes. They're just the perfect fit. Good Americans Always Fit Denim uses a one-size-fits-four design that adapts to your body's changes and fluctuations, guaranteeing the perfect fit every time. So when your body changes, your jeans won't need to. With flexible denim, Good Americans Always Fits limitless four-way stretch and recovery denim moves with you, stretching up and down four sizes holding its shape and flattering yours. We just love their inclusive sizing, available from size double zero to plus size 32. From skinny jeans to boot cut, high-waisted to crop, Good American offers a wide variety of styles that cater to every preference and occasion. Shop now at goodamerican.com and use promo code GGB for $50 off your first pair. Don't forget to select podcast at checkout and choose your show to let them know we sent you. I didn't realize how sick I was when I was holding on to that resentment of my sister, when I was, was just acting tough and saying, oh, I'll teach her. It really does make you sick. And it's it's holding unforgiveness in your heart. And when you're holding unforgiveness, that does not coincide with God. So it just true. doesn't. It doesn't. You can't. For, unforgiveness is truly the worst thing in the world. I remember hearing a story of a woman who was, I'm like a big, big Holy Spirit person. I believe in the healing of Jesus. I believe that Jesus heals on the spot, miraculous healings. I think you can lay hands and Jesus will perform miraculous healings. I do. And I remember hearing a a pastor tell a story about this woman who had, did I tell this before? No. Um, This woman went into this, was like a member of this church and she had a physical ailment. Like there was something wrong or like cancer, something, but there was something like on that you could see. And they were continuously like doing like all of these prayers, laying hands, like just every single week trying to heal this woman because they were seeing so many healings happen. And then there was someone who came and gave her a word and was like, your healing is being blocked by your unforgiveness. Mm, Oh, yes, you did say this. Did I tell the story? Yeah. And so, I mean, I guess it's worth telling again that like unforgiveness is so 
bad for you and it will be the root of so many issues, any sort of unforgiveness, any like unforgiveness is the root of so much turmoil in people's lives, so much chaos. It's true. And it's hard to forgive sometimes. It is. It is. But when you decide to pray for them instead of sitting there and talking bad, right? It 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 changes your spirit. It softens. Something happens in the heart. Yeah. Something happens in the heart when you forgive and you say sorry. Totally. When you decide to sit there and talk and listen and in love, then fight back. It you. There's, it is so pleasing. God sees everything. Yeah. He sees when you decide to do right. He sees when you decide to say sorry, maybe even if you didn't do wrong. Like he sees everything and he he goes in and like does something to your heart. It softens it yeah. and you become better and you become more like him. It's pre- literally what we're talking about. He purifies your heart. And that's the goal. Yeah. That's the goal. We're all at the end of the day, we're all looking for a well done. Yeah. That's what we sh- that's that is the goal. So anytime we have these things of ego, pride, um temptation of sin, we just have to remember, we have to focus on him and just remember we're all looking for a well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um something that is really prevalent in my life personally is just like purity of Purity of heart in the sense of just I your gates, eye gates. Like I'm really, I'm so sensitive now more than ever to just the things around me, to the things that I watch, to the things that I hear, to the things that like I'm engaging in. And I remember I had a moment where it was like such a small, insignificant revelation, but like to me it was such a it was such a big deal in the moment because the simplest things in scripture can seem like nothing until you actually like receive it in your heart and you're like, wow, that's, that's what that means. Like when you see scripture come to life in your life, yeah. like I had this moment one time when I was in my quiet place and I'm just thinking about just the transformation of my heart in terms of purity in so many different aspects. And I have a very long way to go in so many areas, like we all do, but I'm just thinking about like, my transformation from the inside out and how it's like deep and rooted and it's real. Like it's not because I have to, it's not because I'm whatever, like it's real. Like the Holy Spirit legitimately did like a transformation of my heart where things are different. My appetite is different. The things I like are different. Like my wants are his wants. My thoughts are his thoughts. My desires are his desires. Like he legitimately took Jesus took his heart and put it in my heart. That's what I feel. Mm -hmm. And I had this moment where I was in, in quiet time and I'm just thinking and I'm thinking about my transformation and God is just kind of like showing me a picture from like the beginning to now. And I literally go in my head, I'm holy because you are holy. You have made me holy. Like I'm literally... I'm literally sitting there being like, this doesn't just happen by accident. Mm -hmm. I barely have any community. I don't have anyone around. Like literally being close to Jesus, all these hours that I've spent on my knees here have literally transformed everything about me. And the scripture came alive. Like it says that we must be holy because he is holy. And that's what purification is. Like we are so committed to holiness. That's what being a follower of Jesus is. And whatever the world tells you and whatever culture tells you that that's the way to be. And this is what sells and this is what's fun. And this is holiness is the aim and the goal for all of us. That's what it should be. That's what it is for me. And so this this purification process has cost me. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about that. Talk about that because that's good. Purification is extremely isolating. It's really costly. It's sacrificial. Everything has changed. Life as you know it changes, especially when you're so deep in the world. There's nothing about you that's Christian. And then to turn completely Christian, like, it's crazy. It's been insane. But the reason it's good is because it's life. It's life. And I heard someone say it the other day, and I'll never forget it. 
you look at when you're a Christian and you're a true follower of Jesus and you see people who are living of the world, like we always talk about, you're burdened for them because you're like, I have life that you don't know about. Yeah. I have bread that you've never had. Like I have a Jesus who is so worth worshiping and living for and being holy. That's his requirement. Yeah. Being pure is his requirement. And we've all heard it before, but he's looking for a pure bride. That's what he, that's what he's coming back for. And so our goal throughout life must be to become as pure and holy as possible. Yeah. But again, it costs something, but everything in life that's worth anything will cost you something. Yeah, I know. Support for today's episode comes from iHerb. iHerb offers the best curated selection of wellness products at the best possible value across a variety of categories, such as supplements, sports nutrition, groceries, and beauty. This is your one-stop shop for all of your health and wellness needs. They care what's actually inside every bottle that make up your morning, self-care, or cool-down routines, and more. They test and verify to ensure that what you find in every bottle is what's supposed to be there. Their site is so easy to navigate. You can just search by category, brand, or ailments that you want help with, like circulatory support or digestive support. And then you can further narrow your search by ratings, price, diet, like vegan or vegetarian. They've really thought of everything to make shopping for these products convenient and easy. iHerb so supports my healthy lifestyle. I'm so big on working out, so their protein powders and multivitamins are so perfect for me. iHerb offers over 50,000 products in a variety of categories, including supplements, sports nutrition, beauty, bath, and personal care, grocery, baby, and pets. And you can trust that your products will arrive in first-rate condition because iHerb orders are shipped from climate-controlled fulfillment centers in the U.S. to ensure the quality of their products, and they ship to over 180 countries. Products available at iHerb are sourced directly from the brand brands or authorized distributors in the U.S. There are no third-party sellers. This is so important when there are companies out there selling fake products and you have no idea what ingredients are in them. iHerb does not allow third-party resellers on its website or mobile apps. You get free shipping in the U.S. on purchases over $30. And they offer 24-7 customer support if you have questions about your order. And I'm so excited, you guys, because our listeners get 22% off of their first order when you use code GGB at iHerb.com com slash shop slash ggb existing customers receive 15 percent off that's 22 percent off of your first order at iherb.com slash shop slash ggb if you use promo code ggb choose iherb because wellness matters it's you know and we talk about this all the time it has been extremely hard it really has yeah. we have gone through so much like things you guys don't even understand like it feels like we've been slapped in the face, yeah. like, over and over. Like, it has been so hard. Like, the walk is not easy. And I feel like so many people, it gets hard and they're like, I'm out. Yeah. I don't want to do this. But there is something at the end of it that is so rewarding. I remember my old life and, and you know, living of the flesh and doing things that – that yeah, you know what? They are fun. I'm not gonna lie. Like some They things, do feel good. They do feel good. And it and it and it is fun. And but things that feel good aren't always right. Yeah. And we're like, but but what am I being punished? Like is God punishing me? No, there's a reason why he tells us not to do certain right. things. When I look back, I was doing things that were so fun and I was living my life. But that's where, why do you think that where all the anxiety and the totally. knots in my stomach and the depression and the chaos and the obsessive compulsive thinking and the um, all the things that the doctor said that I was? It was all because I was living of the flesh. Yeah. When you live of the fr flesh, that is where anxiety, depression, pride, ego, you cannot live of the flesh but have any peace in totally, your life. Totally. And when you're living in the spirit and when you're w one with God, that's what he means. You're, you are light. You are in the light. It, is it costly? And is it really hard sometimes? And do you have to sacrifice things? Yes, of co course. But that's where there is peace. That's where there is rest. That's where there is you will be in this really difficult situation 
that you don't even know what's going to happen, mm. but you have a peace and a knowing mm. and the spirit of God is in you and mm. you know everything's going to be okay. Yeah. That's what the light is. That's what's been the biggest gift for me. And you know what else living in the spirit is? Mm. Living in the spirit is knowing that you're not perfect. Yeah. But when you do, when you do go the wrong way, the conviction mm. and he corrects you and then there's repentance and then it's that like... If, when I, I when I remember living in my flesh, I never was convicted about anything. I was out acting however I wanted because the spirit of God took the back seat. Totally. I was living in the flesh. And so I was acting however I want. I was talking however I want. I had pride. I was filled with pride and ego. And that's not how we want to live our lives. So, you know, it, it costs something, but it is the most rewarding thing you could ever have. First Peter one twenty two says, having purified your souls by your obedience, having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Having purified your souls by your obedience. Obedience is a beautiful way that God purifies our hearts. I know for me, Obedience is my main everything. Literally, our life is built on obedience. There are moments of obedience that you guys can see from the outside, and there that's probably 0.001% mm -hmm. of the daily steps of obedience that we have to take in our personal lives, in ministry, in business. Like There are so many. I think Ari and I, I wish that you guys could see like the ins and outs of all the decisions that Ari and I make. I'm just going to let you guys into it a little bit because I'm going to get emotional because we really like being on this journey, the two of us with Jesus, like it literally feels like it's just the three of us in this insane world insane. where like Ari and I will be in media, me medians, meetings, and you don't know how many things we've been offered. You don't know how many things are thrown at us all the time. And you and I, and we have teams of people like, of course, you're going to do this. Of course, you're mm -hmm. going to take this. This is really good. Anyone would die to have this. And Ari and I have mutual mind and we look at each other and we're like, we'll go and we'll talk. And it's just the best feeling in the world because we know we live different. We know, Such you know, God point. bless them. Like they're not believers, but we know that our obed like our alliance is with Jesus and not the money that we could possibly make or the opportunity we could take. And so we always step away, be alone with God, pray about everything. And purity of heart is legitimately, I know that Jesus loves us so much because he values our purity of heart above everything else. Purity towards ministry, purity towards each other. Our purity matters to him more than anything else. It matters to him more than him using us. I know that for a fact. Everybody wants to be used by God, but God is like, I care about your heart more than you ever doing anything for me. I'm not going to let you work for me with impurity in your heart. Nobody's perfect, but it's only I'm only going to let you operate out of purity in your heart. And for us, it is a constant refinement of like, I don't care. His grace on us is that the conviction is so loud. We hear God like it's nobody's business. We take a pause before we make any move. Right. Like this is not, I am not trying to boast in our obedience. I want you guys to know how seriously we take be walking in step with God for every possible decision we can make. Purity in the heart. Yeah. Thank you for saying that because it is hands down the most important thing in your walk with God. Yeah. Purity of the heart. Everyone thinks, oh, I need to know all this theology. I need. Yeah. God anointed David as king at 17 years old. Yeah. He was just a boy because of the purity of his heart. Yeah. God is after your heart. He doesn't care about how smart you are. He doesn't care about how much you've done, how much uh, how much you've accomplished in your totally. life. He doesn't care about any of it. He cares about the heart. He's after your heart. And that's why like so many people say, well, how do I hear from God? And how do I get to God? And how can I be used by God? It all starts with the heart. True. Check your heart. And the thing is, is that none of us have a perfect heart. None of us are completely pure in the heart. We all have oh. these things that are 
just ugh, like some. We I, all have <laughs> something or another. I had so much gunk in my soul. It's all about relationship and intimacy. Coming to him and saying, God, what is going on in my heart? Can you help me? Can you reveal to me what is going on? Can you get this out? Humble me even if it hurts. Oh, love, our main prayer. Humble me if it hur- even if it hurts, Jesus. May I truly decrease so that you may increase. I love what you said about King David because I actually was, I wanted to talk a little bit about the fact that like God wants to anoint all of us for service. Like he wants all of us to be put to work for him when the time is right. But David went, I don't know how many years, he was anointed as king and then he went seven, 15, 17, some, sure. something, a certain amount of years where he was not king. Nothing about his circumstances looked as if he was king, but he was anointed as king, but he had to go through his own process. Yeah. And so a lot of us, like Jesus wants to anoint us for service, but you have to go through a purification process because your anointing will crush you if you're not ready. Anointing is weight. It's glory. Like it's weight that will crush you and you can only handle it if you've been through what God needs you to go through. So you're strong enough. Your character needs to be pure. It needs to be strong. Otherwise, God loves you too much to give you something that's going to destroy you. I remember going through my whole, like, I remember being in the entertainment industry and I worked so hard and I was just going, going, going. And I was like, I'm ready. I did the work. Totally. I'm good. Like, why? Like, I, I'm, I'm ready, but nothing was happening to me. Yeah. And then when he broke me down and I was completely wide open and I was at my most broken, humility, humble um, state, that's when he pushed me through the door. That's when he opened doors that I couldn't even, I, I couldn't even fathom. Like I couldn't even believe it. Yeah. And it was in the moment where I seeked him. I was humble and I said, be my teacher Yeah, and I'll be the student. So I don't good. know anything. I thought I knew everything. I thought I was strong. And that's why I love, I, my, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Mm. That's Let's why, go. you know, whatever you're going through right now, you, you think you're so weak. No, that's when he can get to work in your life. Mm-hmm. Take it as an opportunity. Rejoice in that weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly in my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. Yeah. Zechariah 13, 9 says, And I will put this third into the fire and refine them as one refined silver and test them as gold is tested. They will call upon my name and I will answer them. I will say they are my people and they will say the Lord is my God. I say all this to say that a life of holiness and a pure heart has absolutely changed everything about the way that we live and it's so worth it and it's not easy but what is on the other side of your purification is peace and it's life like we said there's life that if you don't know jesus there's life that you don't know about and it's a life worth living it's life after life it's the life that jesus gave up his own life to give us life so we want to invite you guys today to receive jesus if you never have He's the one, you guys. It's only Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody gets to the Father except through Him. Everything that we talk about here, none of it means anything if you don't have Jesus, if you don't have the Word of God that lives within you, if you don't have the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead, if He doesn't live in you, none of it is worth it. So on the other side of this prayer is everything that you desire, all the peace, all the joy, all the love that you've been searching for. It's on the other side of receiving the Holy Spirit. And I believe that right now, if you pray this prayer with us, you can have a transformed and changed life. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Baptize me in your Holy Spirit. 
In Jesus' name, amen. If you just said that prayer for the first time, welcome to the family. We love you so much, and we're going to be praying for you guys. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for watching and being with us. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We're so proud of you. We love to get your prayers in the comment box. We've been yeah. loving that. We've been praying for you. Um, keep chasing Jesus. We see you, and we are just so blessed to be growing in faith with you. We love being your sister. We love you so much. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and give you peace. peace. We love you so we much. We love you so much.